Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. I am ready for the event. Fox Weather, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Well, a NASA astronaut is getting an extended stay in space, and when he returns to Earth in March from the International Space Station, he will hold the record for the longest space flight for an American. Joining us right now from 254 miles above the Earth is astronaut, NASA astronaut Mark Vanderhey. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. So tell me, what is a typical day like for you aboard the space station? Honestly, I don't think there is a typical day, but uh, the routine is that we wake up around 6 a.m., we've got some time to eat breakfast and uh, um, just do hygiene, and then we start working with a meeting at around 7.30 in the morning. Uh, we continue working with an hour break for lunch and uh, all the way till about 7.15 where we have a evening conference. The work actually is one of, one of the nice things it is so varied. So we do things from maintenance. For example, we're up today. We are upgrading the local area network we've got on the space station. So we're making a lot of uh, connections with Ethernet cables. Other days we're doing spacewalks. Yesterday we received some new crewmates. And uh, the reason we're here is because of the hundreds of experiments that are going on during any period of time up on the space station. So can you tell me a little bit about uh, some of the research that you're doing up there in space right now? For sure. We've got, uh, for example, there's uh, plant habitat. We're growing plants on the space station, and that's going to help out potentially with space exploration. We've got uh, a combustion facility as another example. Um, that's potentially got an ability to help further reduce pollution. And then another one we've been doing is called, uh, again, I'm just giving you a few examples, ring shear drop, which potentially could help out people that are suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, were you prepared for the possibility of staying in space much longer, and how does it feel to be a history maker? I'll have to let you know how it feels to be a history maker once I've actually made any type of history. Um, I certainly enjoy my job. Uh, when I first got asked about this job, about whether or not I wanted to fly to space again, it was with the caveat that I might stay for a longer period than a normal long-duration flight. Um, and I did say yes to that, and I did that after talking to my family, which I think was a crucial part for all of our mental well-being, was getting them to, uh, to tell me how they felt about doing it, saying yes or saying no, and they all agreed that I should go ahead and go for it. So I'm content here. I know my family is doing well, and I get to talk to them often, and uh, those are all crucial parts of, of doing something this long. Now, Mark, I know that you can see a whole lot of weather systems up there. So as a meteorologist, I want to know, what is the big difference between seeing what's on the ground up to the sky versus space? Uh, is there anything that you find very fascinating from a meteorological perspective from space? This is kind of meteorological because it's certainly meteor meteorology has to deal with um, what's going on with the atmosphere, but it's also kind of philosophical for me. When we're on the Earth, we're always in the atmosphere. When we're even when we're flying someplace, we're on the ocean. We're in the atmosphere, and that's what we perceive as all of existence for us. Um, when you spend so much time outside of the atmosphere, you recognize that relative to the size of the Earth. The atmosphere is incredibly thin, and it seems like a very precious resource. In fact, I kind of got the perception that space really is not very far away from any of us outside. I'm separated from the vacuum of space by multiple layers of um, metal alloy, and you on the ground are separated from space by this layer of atmosphere. You're basically out in space, but in a, in a puddle of air. So it certainly changed the way I perceive that very precious atmosphere. One very quick question that I wanted to ask. Do you guys get NFL football up there? We are very well supported with uh, whatever sporting events we ask, and uh, the ground team will go ahead and set up whatever channel we request, and we just have to log into okay. a computer 
kind of like a teleconference where the other person is showing a TV set. So, yeah, they, they help us out. And we've had the opportunity to watch games. In the past, I've asked for uh, highlights to be shown, and it's, yeah, it's fun for us to, do, to watch up, to, up here. Awesome. Very, very good to know. Mark, thank you so much for your time and your service. It was wonderful talking to you today. Thanks. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants Thanks. from Frox Weather Station. Please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications. Copy, thumbs up.